Alrighty guys, today we're going to be making a Kydex sheath for this boat knife from the last video and we're going to be utilizing the Ultimate Carry Solution Slim 3.3 clip on that sheath. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. So our first step here is going to be to clamp the knife in the vise uh, just to hold it in place so that I can put some tape on the blade. Uh, I do this to give it just a little bit of space in the in the finished sheath and also to uh, protect the blade while we're working with it here. Normally I am not making a Kydex sheath for a blade that has already been sharpened. Uh, so in this case I don't cut all the way to the edge of the blade. I leave a little bit around it and it didn't negatively affect the process at all. But you can see that I'm using an X-Acto knife there. Those are cheap X-Acto knives from Harbor Freight. Um, I think it was like five dollars for that little kit. When I'm marking out my pieces of kydex I'm giving myself a full inch on both sides of the blade and then I am just marking out my two slabs of kydex here. Normally I wouldn't be this long but I had a little extra and it wasn't enough to do anything with so I went ahead and cut out some long pieces. I'll take a razor blade and scribe a line on the kydex here and then it's just enough that you can snap it with your hands. Uh, then we're going to be putting it into my oven uh, to start gaining heat here. I don't set my PID differently, I just go ahead and turn it on and then keep testing it with the temp gun there. Alrighty, so while, uh, while the Kydex is heating up and before we press it, I want to go over a couple of items uh, that I'll be using today so that uh, you're not confused when you see them and wonder what they're for. Uh, first of all is this goofy looking thing. Uh, this is a good respirator for those who have beards. Uh, it allows you to uh, breathe through the mouth and uh, come out the back here with the filters. So pretty awesome. You don't, uh, you don't get a good seal with a normal respirator with a beard. Uh, second of all are these gloves. These are cut resistant gloves. They kind of have a rubbery surface to them. I like using them to pull the Kydex out of the tempering oven, or I'm sorry, out of the oven and uh, so your fingers don't get hot. And uh, I keep a clean pair of these just for this task. And then lastly, you'll see me using two different types of eyelets. I'll zoom in on them here. I'll be using the quick clip eyelets uh, to do all my shaping. Uh, these eyelets suck for making sheaths, for the record. Don't buy these if you don't have to. I have some that I don't use, so I utilize these eyelets to shape the sheath so that my good eyelets don't get scratched. The DIY holster eyelets would be the good eyelets. These will not crush when you're trying to put them together. Uh, these will. So I, with the quick clip uh, eyelets, they'll crush and you have to get a pair of pliers and smash them out. It's a real big issue. With the DIY holster eyelets, they're way more robust. So if you're going to buy eyelets, buy DIY holster eyelets. Alrighty, now that the public service announcement's over, we can get back with the build. Uh, you can see, like I said, that I am testing the temperature of these pieces of kydex as the temp is coming up in the oven. I'm targeting around 280-ish degrees Fahrenheit uh, which makes them nice and pliable. I'll lay down one sheet and then put the knife in between, lay down the other sheet being very careful to keep the knife pointing straight into these squares or these rectangles of kydex and then gently closing the kydex press over them and clamping them down. Uh, that's a DIY press there, it's just two cheap hinges from Amazon and then some moldable uh, kydex foam there. Uh, that foam is not available anymore from that manufacturer so I can't put the link to that below but I will have the link to a bunch of other items like the kydex itself and uh, the clip and things like that down below for your convenience. So after I get it pressed here I open it slowly and you saw me insert my fingers my goal there is for these two pieces to remain stuck together it makes working it extremely easier so that's what we did and they actually stuck together so it made this process easier. Um, I then take a set of calipers that I have set to uh, 3 eighths of an inch and I'm using that to mark off from my knife around 3 eighths of an inch for my holes that I'll be drilling. Uh, that's a good rule of thumb. In this case I actually went a little wider after I took the clip out and put it on the sheath. I needed a little more space. Uh, but you can see that I'm trying to also uh, kind of get an idea of how the sheath will be shaped. This will be a very simple square sheath. Uh, so I have uh, two parallel lines I drew on the side as guides and then I go ahead and I mark out my holes. My top set of holes uh, 
I set those based on a previous sheath I had made for kind of one of my utility knives around the shop that's turned out to be kind of a test knife. Uh, I tried to match that because I really like that ride height. After I had that top set of holes done, I uh, did the next set of holes at three quarters of an inch down and then the next set of holes at three quarters of an inch down. Uh, so the reason I did that is a lot of tech locks come in an inch and a half to uh, three quarters of an inch increments in their holes. So if the user of this knife ever wanted to uh, use a different mounting option, they'd at least be able to use a tech lock on the sheath. I then take a, an automatic center punch and center punch some holes where I had my marks. And then head over to the mini mill here and drill out those holes. I'll be using a quarter inch eyelets here so I can uh, use a quarter inch bit here to drill out those holes. Pretty simple process here. Uh, after I drill uh, the first two holes, I'll insert uh, these uh, eyelets so that the whole thing stays together. So I'll drill a hole, put an eyelet in, drill a hole, put an eyelet in. And I'll always have two eyelets in the sheath while I'm drilling holes so that it never gets, uh, it never gets off center or, or mis mismatch on my holes. And then uh, take them and kind of mark out my outer lines of this sheath. Head over to the bandsaw to knock off the majority of the material and then head over to my belt sander with a worn ceramic uh, 80 grit belt and shape the edges of the sheath, the sheath roughly. You can see that I'm shaping here. I'll use that two inch idler wheel at the bottom to get the radiuses on the top of my sheath. Uh, this takes a little trial and error to get used to to get the appropriate fit, uh, but you need to take down enough so that the blade can fit in and also enough so that the blade will snap in but not so much that the blade will uh, loosely snap in. So it takes a little trial and error on your first couple of sheaths. You end up getting kind of an eye for it, um, but it, it's just one of those things that practice helps out. You can come back and mess with this with an angle grinder. Oh, I'm sorry, not an angle grinder, with a die grinder and try to get it a little lower if you go too heavy. I normally err on the side of too heavy of retention and just so that I can take a little bit more away and, and get it a little tighter or a little looser, I'm sorry if I go too heavy. I've seen people also heat them up and, uh, and re-squeeze them to get the retention just the way they like it. So a lot of options there. I also take a piece of uh, sandpaper and I will sand out the surfaces that the knife will, will glide into. It makes it a little smoother. You can see there also that the way I construct these sheaths is so that I can take them apart and clean the inside after I'm done grinding. There's a ton of crud that gets in there that I don't want scratching up my knife. So I'll go ahead, take them apart, uh, sand up all the, the edges uh, the way that I like them. I think that's a 220 grit piece of sandpaper. And then I clean the inside of these sheath pieces so as not to have any grit that can potentially scratch my knife uh, stuck in there, at least not from the beginning. The nature of a Kydex sheath is that you'll get some grit in it and you can potentially uh, scratch your knife in the future if you're not careful in cleaning it regularly. I then use an Arbor Press here with these dies from DIY Holster. These things have been awesome, way better than the hand setting method I was using before. I erase my lines that I drew on there with a pencil and I go in here and I press in each one of my eyelets uh, for the sheath to be put together. Very painless process with, this, with these dies. I used to crush an eyelet every once in a while, even a good eyelet uh, with the hammer method, but this is kind of foolproof. Uh, it would be nice if I had that Arbor Press uh, bolted down somewhere, but and you can see I have a really good fit up there. I, you know, I dropped it, but I have a really good fit up. The next step is to take some Chicago screws and just screw in this uh, Alti clip uh, clip into it for back pocket carry. And I'm going to show you next on how uh, this thing fits in your pocket. So I just use a kind of a slight tension here. I don't go too heavy. Uh, the, the user may want to move this around to carry it in their left or right pocket. And at that time, they can use a little blue Loctite or red Loctite if they never want to leave, uh, never want to move. And that's, I leave that up to them. So you can put it in your back pocket like this. You push your little clip down, and you have a nice little carry option there. You can also use it in your front pocket, but I generally like using it in the back. And you can notice that in a lot of my other videos, you'll see my quote-unquote utility cleaver there uh, being carried in this orientation. So I hope you guys really like this sheath build here. Uh, I'll go ahead and put the links to a lot of these items down in the description below and I'll also put some links to some other DIY videos I've made uh, just so that if you're just getting started with knife making and give you a place to start. 
So if you like this video, please consider hitting that subscribe button down below, as well as the bell notification button so that you can be alerted whenever I have a new video uh, posted on the channel. Also, at the end of this video, I'll have some in-screen uh, notes or, or other links that you can click on. Uh, I'll put up a knife build playlist there if you want to see some of the knives that I've built. And I'll also put up another video that you may like. So with all that, I'll catch y'all on the flip side. Oh,